Hello everyone, uh, I'm Advocate Rishika Arora and uh, we are here today to talk about careers in LLM and masters in LLM. So um, I suggest that we wait for another two, three minutes for everyone to join in since the time was 6 p.m. Uh, so we're going to wait for another two, three minutes for everyone to join in and then we will start with the session. I hope I'm audible to everyone just in case uh, somebody just one person can just tell me that I am audible that will be very helpful uh, thank you so much can someone please okay I am audible thank you so much so we're gonna wait just another two three minutes at six five exactly we would start with the session and uh, we would go forward with it uh, Till then, please um, stay there, stay online, and uh, I'll be back. Thank you everyone who's joining in. Thank you so much. We're going to just wait till 6.5 to start with the session so that everyone who was informed about uh, the session can join in. Since it's a live session, so I would want as many people to join in as per the time schedule. And uh, we would then move forward. Thank you so much for your patience. Uh, just another two minutes and then we will start with the session. Thank you, Janvi. I'll just add the questions. So guys, it's 6.5 and as I promised, I would be starting the session now. Hello everyone, thank you for joining in. Thank you for being a part of this session. Thank you for coming here to know more about LLM. What can it do for your career prospects, your opportunities in the future and how you can take it forward to make your career go the next level. Well, I am Advocate Rishika Arora. I'm a litigating lawyer in the Delhi High Court, majorly. Of course, I practice in Delhi, High Court, Law Courts, and before the tribunals. But at the present, I'm also serving as the Joint Chairperson of the Commonwealth Lawyers Association, which is a UK-based organization where all the lawyers from Commonwealth countries come together to study the policies and the laws formulated by different governments, we try and uphold the rule of law to take it forward and to push the governments to make an impact uh, as per the rule of law. Moving forward, I'm a mentor with the integrating blocks. 
uh, integrating blocks is uh, a service that provides for llm students and llm uh, aspirants to take their uh, to take their dream of doing an llm forward i'm a mentor with them where i mentor llm aspirants to uh, apply for the llm applications as well as uh, to make it to their best college or the college of their dreams uh, to talk a, a little about my career path i was a law researcher i graduated in the year 2013 i was a law researcher at the delhi high court with justice indramit kaur i went for my masters to columbia law school where i did llm uh, in corporate law ipr as well as cross border transaction in emerging markets a case study of india to be very particular i came back i started litigating in the year 2020 january 2020 i was appointed as the joint chairperson of the commonwealth lawyers association's young lawyers group where we as young lawyers try and uphold the rule of law in commonwealth countries and uh, now i'm here in front of you and i'm very happy privileged feel privileged and honored to be coming and speaking to all, you all about how llm can impact your career the career prospects that you um, will be you know that will help you to take your career to the next level so uh, thank you so much the virtual lawyer for inviting me to be a part of this session and uh, thank you for all of you for joining in well the first question that i would be answering is a very very um pro predominantly asked question and i think this is one question every llm aspirant comes forward to ask me and this is the first question i need to ask for all the students why an llm why a llm that i need to do an llm from an indian university or do i need to do an llm from a foreign university and particularly why an llm why even i should be going in for an llm when i already have a llb degree well i can just say it in very simple terms like every person has their own goals every person has their own way of taking things forward how they want their career to actually progress take it forward and how they want to structure their career in the future in the very next coming future 5 years 10 years down the line how do you want to see yourself do you want to restrict your knowledge and your education base that you have to just an llb or do you want to have an in depth knowledge about a particular subject so as to have a specialization in that subject and take it forward what an llm does to you it gives you career advancement it takes your career to the next level that is the next level degree that you achieve that you get Be, being a part of the llm program gives you an exposure to an in depth knowledge about a particular subject or the subjects of your choice a lot of universities offer you a general llm program that helps you structure your own llm uh, course where you can take on two three different subjects where you would you think or you feel that you should be specializing for example me i took a uh, combination of ipr and corporate law and uh, comparative law i would say where i started about corporate law uh, and then moving forward i uh, uh, i uh, started focusing on ipr and since i had the knowledge and uh, your understanding of the corporate law of usa so i thought of having a uh, a comparative analysis or comparative law study of emerging markets in india and how it can help my career so that was what career path that i chose so a career advancement llm provides you with a career advancement moving forward networking opportunities of course networking opportunities is something a lot of people really go forward and they want to do llm for networking opportunities because you will see professionals from different countries um you know who are legal professionals and they are established professionals in their own jurisdiction coming forward and being a part of that program and then you get to interact with them you get to understand the laws of different countries how they function not just the on the professional front you make really good personal bonds you really make really good personal you have really good personal friendships so certainly it is um another um you know that that is another way of taking this forward that you know um 
career advancements my apologies for this career advancements career advancements and taking it forward uh so that is an opportunity for you to move forward ne next moving on is networking and subject specialization now you would see that a lot of stu uh, a lot of um, professionals who are part of that llm program are not just um there because of their uh, you know they want to take the uh, llm program and they want to have the llm degree but also for the reason that they want to uh, have that subject specialization so you would see a lot of professionals already practicing in a particular area for the last 5 to 10 years be a part of that uh, be a part of that uh, you know program and then thank you so much janvi uh, yeah that was a uh, Uh, a little niche in between and i now put it on the selfie mode thank you so much janvi um yes subject specialization is the next um reason why a lot of uh, why, why a lot of llm aspirants want to go in for llm moving on forward of course new career opportunities as you get a knowledge of uh, you know be a part of a new jurisdiction you make an effort and you know you enroll yourself in the llm program of a different uh, of a different country or in a different country altogether that helps you take your career to the next level how uh, a you you tend to you know uh, be eligible to sit for the bar exam of that country a lot of countries prefer that you have the basic education of the laws there and then you become eligible to give the bar exam of their country you get to be in touch with a lot of professionals from that country that particular country that helps you build that professional network or that professional bonding which takes you to uh, which opens a lot of opportunities that is the same thing that happens in india also and i'm sure a lot of you are aware about it how in india also your networking opportunities and your opportunities open up with as much as you interact amongst your peer so certainly uh, you know career uh, career opportunities is you know opening up to new career opportunities is another reason why one should be going in for llm of course in case you are doing llm from a uh, university like you know uh, from a university abroad or uh, an international university i would say then that gives you a um, chance to have knowledge of both the different countries the laws of both the different countries you have to have you get an opportunity to have a comparative uh, like you know a uh, a comparative analysis rather of two different jurisdictions all together that you can apply to your everyday uh, professional uh, you know professional outlook or your professional uh, you know advancement i would say and you can apply both the jurisdiction you can have clientele from both the different countries or the countries that you're doing llm uh, a lot of uh, universities do give you an option to do a dual uh, you know a second llm so i would not say just the two countries so obviously as you progress there are a lot of students or llm aspirants who want to take uh, you know llm uh, to the next level where yeah, they have want to have specialization of another subject so they would take uh, a second llm now academic career academic career is one of another reason which um, you know drives people to do llm uh, llm aspirants to do work where uh, like you know a uh, career in your academic career a lot of uh, llm aspirants want to become professors they want to have an in depth knowledge of that particular subject and of course they go in for llm they do llm and then they come uh, they get associated with a university or they get uh, you know they are on the post of a professor as a professor they take on that role and um, academic career advancement is another reason why a lot of people take on um, llm as the next step in their career now um, before uh, i thank you so much i'm getting a lot of questions and i'm so thankful to all of you for sending all these questions i would just make a note that at 6:40 exactly i will stop this session and i will take up all the questions that are being addressed to me and um, i think uh, by then i would just give you a brief about how to go around uh, you know how an llm aspirant should be preparing for llm application process what is the need for you to do llm and how you can actually strategize to get into one of the best university or your dream university so um 
one very important question I'm I'm often asked is why should I do it from a foreign university and not an Indian university? So my very basic question to that uh, to that uh, answer to that question is that whether you want to have an international exposure is something very personal to every person. So if you want to have an international exposure, certainly you should go in for an international university. You should have an international LLM degree with you. get yourself enrolled in an international llm program and then that would help you that would help you develop international contacts that will help you have a uh, understanding of other uh, uh, you know laws relating to that country so that is one aspect why you should be going in for international llm well llm special llm basically means master of laws so you are specializing in a particular subject of your choice an area of your choice so you can do it from india also there is no bar that you should be doing it only from an international university you can certainly do it from india as well but that is personal choice every person has a uh, their own way of taking and you know how they want to structure their career how they want to take it forward how they want to make you know advancements in their career and that is very personal to each and every one of us now another question that i'm asked i think i'm going to pin this um, your which is llm during covid times now this question has been asked uh from me like you know recently because we are in during facing a pandemic which is uh um uh, which is something uh, i think every one of us is facing and a lot of students got through the admission this these this year and uh, all the classes are going online so um a lot of students uh, asked me this question you know llm during covid times should i be uh should i be applying for it should i be going for it should i be taking on this program this year or should i be taking it on for the next year so this is going to be i hope i am able to pin it this time and not switch my camera okay perfect so llm during covid times so i'm going to analyze two aspects to that first llm um, applicants and then people who've already got admission during this time during covid times in a university so firstly focusing on llm applicants those who are planning to go for llm next year that is 2021 i would really encourage you certainly apply for it and as early as you apply it is going to be beneficial for you please please start applying right away like you know start preparing for your llm applications it takes a it takes no about uh 4 to 5 months uh minimum i would say that you should be giving it to your llm applications for a very basic reason that you know all your process the documents um the application uh the personal statement that you would be writing and other uh, they some universities ask for a research proposal also or a research paper so all those things would take you take it take time for you to write to make uh, you know to have an application process uh, application ready for submission close to the deadlines so um, i think it is going to be beneficial for those who are applying right now in this uh, year for the next year admissions for the reason that we are hopeful that by then the situation is going to be under control and we would be able to travel internationally one of the basic reason and one of the most pro- predominant reasons why anybody chooses llm uh from an international university is for an international exposure now do not give up on that that is something that is going to transform you to a next per- to a different person all to- together it is going to take you personally and professionally to a different level and trust me when i'm saying be- this because of my own personal experiences that i'm te- telling you here that you should not give up on the opportunity of going and doing an llm in that particular country or an international country or having an exposure to interact with international students so that is something of really great importance now moving forward for those who have taken admission who've got admission this year and you know uh, i know and i understand a lot of classes have now shifted to online classes now i can what i can suggest during these times is that um if you can write to your university write to them and ask for a deferment 
ask for a deferment based on these 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 reasons that it is covid time we are all facing with a pandemic and it is going not going to be uh you know it, it we will not be able to travel this year so i would request for a deferment for this particular year i think that is going to be beneficial for you to take this uh to to make full use of an llm program so ask for a deferment from all the universities that you have got admission into ask the def uh, as a university for a university that gives you deferment is that uh, take place uh, or that person that llm aspirant is actually uh, you know exposed to or uh, you know that can be of benefit to that llm aspirant in the coming years uh, well to be very honest and take you know answer this question it depends on um, on you how much effort do you make what kind of opportunities do you get certainly your university helps you they would uh, you know uh, there are going to be um, there are going to be opportunities that are going to come forward uh, because of the university and uh, because of the job fairs that the the university would be offering you so certainly uh, you would get opportunity to interact with different firms for their uh, you know to get placed there but there is no certainty that you will get a job there but yes an international llm degree certainly keeps that option open for you uh, you know uh, in the future in case you know you do get an opportunity that comes across your way where you can apply to be a part of an international firm so certainly uh, that opportunity remains open for you now a very important aspect to any of the llm application process that we go forward is how do you start planning for the llm now strategizing as i think this is something that i have been emphasizing throughout my mentorship period with the law llm aspirants and the law students please strategize please make take an effort to sit down think about it janvi i hope uh, it is now um, i hope uh, it is now unpaused and like you know everyone can see me properly uh i think there was a network issue and uh, i hope now uh, the the video is fine janvi can you just give me a thumbs up if that's okay okay great so moving forward um certainly strategize what do you mean by strategizing now i mean by strategizing is please build on your profile why would any of the international universities or any other university take you on board there has to be a reason for them to take you on as an llm you know llm student llm candidate for that particular year because your competition is not just going to be students from india it's going to be all over the world so understand this we have about 100 seats and we have about close to about 8000 to 10000 applicants in that university every year at least i'm talking about the uh, you know the universities that most of the llm aspirants really look up to or they want to be a part of the top notch universities so for those 100 but you know uh, for those 100 for those 100 seats you are going to be uh, competing against about 5000 8000 10000 students as against that it depends on every university how it takes forward so certainly you have to strategize build on your profile how do you build on your profile you need to show them that you have that extra you know uh, that that element that you know distinguishes or that makes a mark as against other llm applicants who are going to be a part of that 
uh, evaluation process so any person you know uh, is evaluating your llm application or as against the other students should see that yes you have that in you to become an llm uh, student of their university and you are competent to be sitting amongst all those international students and give them a competition rather so strategize profile building is very important start working on your research papers start going in for internships you know start uh, applying to uh, different law firms for internships please start early on that process um, writing research paper is certainly i would say um, one of the important aspects a lot of universities do consider that as an important element while evaluating your llm application so if you do get an opportunity to write research papers to get them published please go ahead and start doing it in a timely manner and do not leave everything for the last minute because it will probably not be of help so uh moving forward how an llm application process really works what do you need what are the documents you need for an llm application so the first and foremost every university will have a form application form that would be you would be required to fill into that application form so certainly the application form is your first and foremost document then certainly they would be wanting to know whether the english language proficiency of course they would want to see that if you are from an english speaking country they waver it off but it is always uh, you know important uh, that you should be uh, giving your toefl exam or ielts for uh, showing that you know you are competent enough to take the uh, the the classes um uh, the classes in the foreign university in case you are applying for it certainly indian universities do have a different application uh, you know process and how they take it uh, you know uh, forward that is based on the exams that you have to give so the criteria is different when evaluating in uh, indian universities and in foreign universities the second uh, thing is of course personal statement a uh, personal statement is one of the most important documents uh you know that you would be uh presenting to the um, to the admissions committee why because of the reason that that is going to be that one single document is going to introduce you is going to introduce you is going to make a is going to make a mark for you and is going to prove it to the admissions committee why you are an uh you know a candidate they do not want to miss so that one single document is going to be an introduction about you your life history your future goals your past efforts your long term short term goals and why you are an a candidate because of your previous um you know uh, efforts and all that you have gotten together in that one particular document or that on that paper that will tell all that you have done in your you know as a law student or everything that you have done in your legal profession and why you should be there as a llm applicant why should be uh, your your application should be considered and why you should be considered as a candidate or uh, to be a part of the class of that year so certainly personal statement is very important research proposal a lot of university these days are uh, requesting for a research proposal also research proposal or a research paper so as to see that you have uh, you know you can uh, conduct a well uh, well thought of a well researched uh, a well researched paper so certainly they ask for your research papers research document or uh, any of the publications that might have uh, that might have uh, you know got published so certainly research proposal is another important aspect another important document that you would want to prepare uh, for because every university will have uh, different criteria of the documents that they want for their llm applicants to submit now uh, the next comes your resume resume or cv so when you talk about a resume what all should be going in in a resume of course your education qualifications your past work experience your extracurricular activities what all activities you participated in or what all activities you become a part of and that has enhanced your career 
in case you have any memberships of the other organization like you know if you're enrolled bar council of in the bar council of india certainly you have you should be giving your membership so all these things need to go in your curriculum vita or your cv resume that uh, will go with your application process of course recommendation letters comes next reference letters from your professors the seniors you've worked with or any other person you think that can give that will uh, give you a recommendation uh to be a part of that llm program for that year so recommendation letters are very important and you should be getting it uh, you know you should be working very hard to get those recommendation letters because that is the only criteria you would be getting recommendation letters on now of course uh, the financial assistance is assistance form is an optional thing not every student really um applies to it but certainly um they they, they do provide most of the universities provide for financial assistance form which is optional if you want to apply for it good if you don't want to apply for it that is personal that is something totally on you and uh, you know you can assess it uh, based on your uh, financial needs and of course in case you do need financial assistance i would encourage that you should be filling in those the form so that is what an llm application process comprises of you should be starting early because when you start writing your personal statement when you start giving the toefl exam or ielts exam recommendation letters your cv all this will take time and it is going to it is of going to be of help if you do uh you know put in that effort for the last 4 or 5 months um previous to filing of the application to take this and make this a successful application for you um so preparation research and law school selection strategizing these four should be of utmost importance to you preparation as i said preparation is how you're going to build on your profile what are you going to show that x factor that is there for the uh, admissions committee to actually take you on board so preparation is very 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 important for you certainly please 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 make it a point that you start early so that you prepare you know plan for your application you know everything can be solved and can be achieved through hard work is some a motto that probably i have uh i have followed all throughout my life and nothing is impossible if you want to get into the top most university put in that hard work strategy strategize on your application take time to think while you're writing your personal statement you have to weave a story and tell them how good a candidate you are so that all that takes time so planning a, you know you should it should be a well thought out application so everything should connect with each other that is why you need that time you need time to strategize on your application take that time so prepare for it research research on the kind of law schools that you would be wanting to be a part of LLM degree is of course very beneficial for your career be it in India or abroad it is of great importance but you need to research on the kind of college that you want to be a part of the university you want to apply each LLM application also uh, you know uh, there is a certain amount that you have to pay for the LLM application to be submitted to that uh, to that university so that is also a consideration that you need to keep in mind you cannot uh, blindly apply to about 40 or 50 colleges so you have to research on the kind of college based on the professors based on the knowledge that they are giving forward uh, you know they're uh, offering you based on the specialization based on what you want to do exactly what how you want to take your career forward everyone has their own short term and long term plans so based on that please select what kind of university which university you want to be a part of do not blindly apply for your llm application now research being one of course then comes to law school selection out of those 40 50 that you would have thought that you can be a part of you would come down to about 10 12 maximum 15 i would suggest not go beyond 15 for a for the very basic reason because you were your oh, the whole energy and your strategizing and the um like you know the time and effort that would you would be putting in you would want to put into in those 10 or 15 applications that you would be sending maximum i'm saying 15 applications that you would be sending so that those applications make it through the cut so do not apply to every universities select few given your 100% to those 
that is going to really be of benefit and so it's not that difficult to get into the universities but yes you have to put in that hard work now strategize strategize is the next thing that i would say take time think about it how do you want to strategize how do you want to present your story i know it's not the most easiest task in the world to write about yourself i always say that the most difficult task in this world is to write good things about ourselves but that is the most beneficial thing that will happen or the most useful art you would develop when it comes to applying not just to the universities but for the uh, future of like you know your career also if you want to apply to the firms you know your cv talks a lot about you the first half page of your cv describes you more than you would describe it in an interview so certainly take time to strategize now moving forward from here i think uh, we are almost close to 640 and i would be wanting to take the questions because i see a lot of questions popping up so um janvi would you uh, uh send me a request to uh, join in yes i can see you we just waiting for janvi to connect in hi rishika um, thank yeah. you for giving such hi, an Janvi. insightful lecture thank you so much for having me as part of the virtual lawyers i think there was a little niche in the beginning with yeah, my yeah i was i was like i was like i need to message her and tell her it's the other way around if she doesn't know then we're looking at a wall yes. <laughs> while we're hearing you talk <laughs> yeah i realized that i realized that then my file my my, my office home office actually got displayed to everyone how life behind the way is it is. <laughs> but uh, yeah and also that packet of that uh, like you know the snack that i usually have oh. which is quite huge i now realize that everybody has so, seen so, but so now yeah, you also you told so people what to snack me. on while writing their statements <laughs> Oh, snack on anything. I snack and binge on whatever yeah. I find in my like you know site because I'm so stressed. Of course, these application process when I was applying yeah. for it like five years back, it was so stressful. For I think I prepared for good eight to nine months. So I was working as a law researcher that time. Yeah. I think it really helped me, uh, because it helped me develop my own my research abilities and you know it helped me with my research papers. i was able to do a lot of research of course i had the uh, like you know expert opinion from my fellow researchers and of yeah. course the seniors that i was with so who were like yeah. so supportive and motivating and i was able to get research publications at the end of it so i think it was um it was a uh, very stressful yeah. yet so fruitful because of after like you know all that period that you've put in hard work and you're certain that now it is like you know you are a part of that you are an alumni of the university that you dreamt of it just giving up on that you know working for those 8 9 months that was most important and you do crack it i have seen about i would say 95 people 95% of the people who actually taken that time for like 8 to 9 months to strategize put in their application plan and you know structure their application and put it across and work for those 8 9 months they yeah you know the uh, my so on this topic my cousin she just got through columbia law school in this that's amazing that's really good i think uh, she's going to have a good uh, time and uh, it's it changed me as a person personally and professionally so certainly i would encourage anyone to you know that's what i've been saying that please do have that exposure if you can please take in that take into account that you know it yeah, transforms some... your professional growth you know your they professional want to do an growth. internship and goes next level <laughs> you can well, de- thank you so much you can, uh, you can de- you know uh, right 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 now i am only into more of mentorship yeah. because we are all in a lockdown so we are also not uh, like you yes. know of course there are virtual internships um yeah. so i think uh, once we are uh, like you know over this lockdown maybe yes, the definitely. opportunities will be and, more and um, in fact i think um, this lockdown one of the one of the biggest boons that this lockdown has given us if we look at it positive is that all of us can connect to each mm-hmm. other on a very large scale network now 
her out in ways that right, we wouldn't right. otherwise be able to do because we're all just in our lives and like doing whatever mm. we're doing but now just taken this pause and we're actually mm. sort of you know getting it out there talking about things that we ideally would not have hmm true that i mean i think uh, this lockdown has been one of the most uh, i think trying times but yes it has taught us so much that we can connect uh with each other staying in our homes also and i think we are utilizing each and every minute towards our professional good amount of work yeah. that we are putting in now to like you know have that uh, to not waste this lockdown period i think uh, this is something which is uh, which is which is beautiful i would say like you know i have seen people put in more yes. effort during this lockdown uh then i have seen them yeah. uh, during the usual days yeah. and the go same goes for me i think i put in me more too. effort now <laughs> at being in the lockdown and you know my work from home my friends situation. are calling me and they're like listen you're so, busier than you are otherwise like once this gets lifted you will need five additional days to actually rest and recover <laughs> yes true that <laughs> i think that goes for all of us so quickly taking on the questions now since we have just about uh, 10 15 so minutes left 10 questions i have is so that will... um, so basically talking about applying for llm and applying for competitive exams right so in india we are all very fond of our co- competitive exams and our you know entrance exams the judicial exams all of that right so we have a lot of questions asking that uh, first is is applying for llm abroad as difficult or as competitive as a indian competitive exam such as the ias or the judiciary and the second aspect of this question is that is an llm beneficial if you want to further go on and then probably do a competitive exam like the judiciary or the ias i would um, so i will take on the first question um, you know whether uh, it is as competitive as uh, the written exam so every uh, i wouldn't say that every application that we file can be assessed on the same level you know the mode of examination uh, is going to be very different or assessing so here it is more of a written exam that we have to learn and then you know based on the questions be it the objective questions or be it the mcq subjective questions question answers that that are posed in that questions like you know you have to you know yes. clear that yes. exam or the cut off list i would say whereas an application process is very different now that will take you that preparation time is almost the same or maybe higher on either side depending on how you want to structure your career as yes. i say it is very personal to every person so how you structure your career so certainly it is going to be very different you cannot compare the two hmm. like you can't hmm. compare apples with oranges so it is like that moving on to the next of course uh, the second question was whether the competitive exams you want you can have an llm and come back it is going to be beneficial probably okay. not okay. probably not uh for the reason that uh, you know you will be giving uh, the competitive exams in india so obviously you need to understand and learn the laws of india per se if you're going in an international yes. university you will learn the laws of that country it will help you develop the analytical abilities certainly it will help you develop as a professional certainly but you still have to go through that same amount of hard work come back here study okay. and okay. then you know crack that exam. okay so the next question so, is um what would you suggest is the best topic to do an llm in because nowadays we have a lot of areas of law and a lot of topics that we can do llm in so it can get confusing so what what according to you is like the best topic i think it's all person to person i would not say that you know today when i have an interest in corporate law and i ask uh, somebody who is really passionate about ipr to come and do corporate law with like you know because this is like one of the uh, most uh, sought after courses so i don't think so i'm doing justice giving that uh, suggestion to anybody to do corporate law to somebody who is so passionate mm. about ipr or arbitration you know international yeah. arbitration is so taking off these days and of course um, you know a lot of students go in for sport law though that is not that is still in the mm. niche area here in india but mm. a lot of students take on sports law also as their mm. uh, specialization so each to its own so what how you want to take forward your career what okay. are your interests okay so the next uh, question is 
which country do you think has the best llm course or the best university offering the best llm courses yeah again that is again a personal choice i took on us for the reason you know um, of course the evaluation process of us is okay. more and on overall basis in comparison to a lot of other countries that take on um, you know uh, more on the academic side but uh, you know with us of course uh, i feel that you know my opportunities or my inclination towards how i want to direct and structure my career was yeah. more towards us uh, yeah. and you know i would want to take it there now of course uh, like you know i think i'm grateful that i'm part of uh, organizations in uk also but uh, when i was thinking my thought process was certainly uh, my own career okay. development okay so the I next question it. is that uh, do you think llm is necessary for someone who wants to be a litigating advocate like they have decided that they want to join litigation so yeah i think llm really helps you so yes um this is a question that a lot of students ask me why i would say because i myself i'm a litigating lawyer who chose the path of doing an llm first why i'm saying this it is going to really help you it helps you develop your on your analytical abilities you will think on a very different footing when it comes to professional you know deliver delivering that professional work that you have yeah. everyone puts in hard work it's how you present it so it develops everything develops yeah. into making you who you are so llm helps you obviously you get that specialized knowledge and in depth knowledge of that particular subject in comparison to others who would not have done llm and certainly it helps you develop on your professional okay. so uh, another question firstly actually i wanted to ask you this question so after you graduate till the time you do your llm so what according to you is the timeline like how much mm -hmm. time should a person on an average invest and how much you know what will be the timeline since you graduate until you actually go and you know start your llm so um you you graduate somewhere in august september mm -hmm. like i think july august is the time you most of the universities uh you know have their graduation uh, for the uh, final year law students so the application process most of the applications close okay. down on okay. in december that year right and then you take admission because they would be sending out the application hmm. uh, like you know acceptances they would be sending out acceptances any time between january end okay. to uh, april beginning so that is the yeah. i'm talking about an on average that is the timeline when they would be sending out acceptance and there, there is no list that comes out you get an email most of the universities send out an email so it is on hmm. a rolling basis that they send out the email you take an admission in that llm process uh, a pro uh, program llm program uh, on that year i think uh, august september is when the classes start taking place so it's a whole year process why i say it's like one and a half year till you be there because you would be starting with your llm application why i say that you know start on that year january when you are graduating if you want to yes. apply right after your you know llb so january yeah. that year start preparing for it by the time you graduate you should be handy with your recommendations your toefl personal statement first draft of personal statement and um, you know your cv should be ready so that you can ask for reviews also then you would be starting with the pr the process starts in august september for applications open up so you there are a lot of universities right. that have like early applications so that okay. process takes okay. about one so, and a half so uh, another question is do you think we should do uh, llm right after graduation or should we work and get some work experience before that personal choice okay. again this is personal choice okay. how you want to take so, it so uh, one it's i think this is the choice. last question that we'll take uh, how useful is a pg diploma course for students who want to pursue masters in india and abroad post so that will add up to your cv that will show if you are doing the same you know llm in that mm. same subject that you've done your diploma in that is going to be an additional factor for them to consider and take you on board as a can candidate uh, right uh, okay. an llm applicant for that year that you know you are so inclined and so passionate so, about so, that so it helps you if you have a pg diploma in in the subject but it has to be Certainly. in the subject that you want Certainly. to do llm in okay it yes i mean you right. how will you build on your profile right otherwise if i am doing it in ipr and i'm saying i want to do corporate okay. law it's okay. not helping my right. okay thank you rishika thank you right. so much for doing this
Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you for everyone for having me and staying on board for Thank listening you. to this lecture. Thank you so much. And you can certainly yes, anyone DM has any questions, DM us. We'll get you in touch with her. Any follow-ups? You can comment, tag her, anything. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Thanks.